But this is one time. Forget the conspiracy. Listen to our government agencies. These guys are telling the truth. You know, there's no conspiracy here, folks. Just right. get your damn... So today I'm going to talk about this symbol here from the World Health Organization, considering they are about to take over the world. And we have this symbol here of the serpent on a pole or a staff on the flat earth map. And it's basically the United Nations symbol with a serpent. And originally this serpent on a staff did come from God. And it's in a story about Moses in the Bible. But then later on, it became a, uh, an idol and was used in ways associated with magic and sorcery. Pharmakia, in a way that God did not intend, and it was ultimately destroyed. But yet, it seems to live on today in the symbol of the World Health Organization, who once again is about to enslave humanity and tyrannize the population. So we have the bronze serpent. This is Numbers 21, verse 4, and it's a story about uh, the Israelites who left Egypt and they're complaining. Let's pick it up from verse 5 here. And the people spoke against God and against Moses. These are the Israelites who were rescued from slavery. Why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no food and no water, and we loathe this worthless food, which was the manna from heaven that came down every morning, and the uh, birds, the quail, in the evening. Then the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people. Think about God as the Father, and these Israelites are his children. So basically, the Father is punishing his children. Now, I'm sure there's a father out there somewhere who has heard this from his child, right? And you've been like working hard all day to make money to buy that food, and then the kid complains about it. You might feel like sending fiery serpents upon your child at times, not because you hate the child or because you're mean, but to kind of teach them a lesson and say, hey, this food just doesn't come down out of heaven, which it did actually at the time, ironically enough. So it's kind of teaching the people a lesson, like a good father would. This is discipline. This is a father disciplining his children. And they bit the people so that many people of Israel died, right? They, they, these are poisonous snakes. And the people came to Moses and said, we have sinned. For we have spoken against the Lord and against you. Pray to the Lord that he take away the serpents from us. So Moses prayed for the people. All right. So here we see the lesson learned. The people repent. They confess their sin and they ask Moses, who's their intermediary at the time, to pray for them. And the Lord said to Moses, make a fiery serpent and set it on a pole. And everyone who is bitten when he sees it, shall live. So Moses made a bronze serpent or a copper serpent and set it on a pole. And if a serpent bit anyone, he would look at the bronze serpent and live. It seems to me that looking at the bronze serpent is an act of repentance after they got bit by the serpent. These people are proactive. They have to actually look at the bronze serpent. So this uh, ultimately this started out as a symbol of repentance and mercy and forgiveness and healing. So you can see how later on it would be associated with pharmakia. So this is 2 Kings 18.4 under the reign of Hezekiah, one of the few righteous kings they ever had. It says here, he did what was right in the eyes of the Lord. Not very many kings did that. He removed the high places. These are like uh, pagan temples and broke the pillars and cut down the Asherah. So I personally believe this is an ancient version of a Christmas tree. See, the Israelites were whoring after other gods. And in fact, in the book of Kings, 1 and 2 Kings, this is where you find a lot of references to the transvestites and also to child sacrifice. So these are the abominations of the nations. And the Israelites were uh, taking part in those things. And he broke in pieces the bronze serpent that Moses had made. So why would he do that? For until those days, the people of Israel had made offerings to it. It was called the Nekushtan. So this is something that a righteous king would break in pieces. But yet, for some reason, we have the World Health Organization that uses this as its symbol about to take over the world. People made offerings to it, probably hoping for uh, good luck and health and prosperity, those kind of things. But they're not supposed to do that. This is idolatry, whoring after the other gods. 
And they even saw the Asherah as God's wife, because this is a goddess. And they had the transvestites. 1 Kings 14, 24, and there were also male cult prostitutes. These are the transvestites. So it basically says, and there were also transvestites in the land. They did according to all the abominations of the nations, right? These abominations included the transvestites and child sacrifice and castration and all kinds of stuff. Now, 1 Kings 15, this is another righteous king, put away the male cult prostitutes out of the land, the transvestites, and removed all the idols that his father had made. So we see the same thing. Hezekiah removed all the idols, including that bronze serpent on the pole, which is now the symbol of the satanic empire that controls the world. And then here, 1 Kings 22, 46, and from the land he exterminated the remnant of the transvestites. So even the transvestites have a remnant, and the righteous king gets rid of these things. And what do we have now? We have a president who has meetings with transvestites and promotes them and is married to one. Now this is King Josiah. So this is after Hezekiah. Josiah was one of the other few righteous kings. So we got rid of all these things associated with uh, Baal, to the sun and the moon and the constellations, right? All this uh, pagan stuff. And he brought out the Asherah. There's the Asherah again from the house of the Lord. And he broke down the houses of the transvestites who were in the house of the Lord. So the transvestites were in the temple where the women wove hangings for the Asherah. This is a very complex passage in Hebrew to translate. I think it's possible that the women were making clothes for the transvestites because normal female clothes were probably too small for the men who wore them. So that could be what this is uh, talking about. could be that they're making things to hang on the early version of the Christmas tree, like Christmas ornaments or something. That's possible. And the Christmas ornaments do have uh, fertility-type imagery, and then notice you have the transvestites right here in the same sentence. So the transvestites and the Asherah are all associated. Notice, again, so the, there's the Asherah and there's the bronze serpent. And here's the bronze serpent. So Jesus actually says in John 3, 14, And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. But again, it's not talking about the idolatrous version of this serpent on the pole that we saw in the book of two kings. This is the original thing that we saw in Numbers. Moses lifting up the serpent, he was told to do that by God, and it was a gesture of uh, repentance and discipline leading to repentance and ultimately mercy and grace and forgiveness. So we look to Jesus like these people, like these sinners who were bit by the snake. They confessed their sins and looked to the serpent on the pole which also may symbolize the defeat of Satan to a certain extent. So a lot of things in medicine will use this serpent on the pole imagery to represent uh, healing. And it did kind of start out that way, but later on, as we saw in the Book of Two Kings, it became associated with the, uh, the abominations of the nations. And these righteous kings also kicked out the transvestites, and we certainly have a lot of those these days. So anyway, serpent on the pole controlling the world. This could very well bring about the Great Tribulation. Bill Gates is going to have his little germ squad, and they're going to tell everyone what to do. There's going to be lots of false signs and wonders, which includes false pandemics, fake pandemics. And there's going to be lots of venomous snakes biting people or possibly injecting people. This almost looks like a syringe, doesn't it, actually, if you think about it. There's a serpent on the syringe injecting poison into people. God is the one who lets Satan out of the abyss to do this. Why? It's the same reason the original serpents bit the people, because the people were complaining and the people were not obeying God, the creator of the world. Remember him? So our job is to confess our sin and to pray. So I think Jesus kind of gives us the remedy right here. So as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness so that people who got bit by the serpent could be healed. They had to look upon the sign that God provided and humble themselves and repent. So the Son of Man must be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. Whoever looks on the bronze serpent would live, and then here it says we'd have eternal life, right? That's really, ultimately, life is eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. There's that eternal life again.
I don't know if you guys are interested in that or not, but I kind of am. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world because the world is already condemned. Back in Genesis 3, the world was condemned, but in order that the world might be saved through him. But not everyone wants to be saved. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. Just like back in the uh, Moses and the serpents, if people did not look upon that pole and they got bit, they would die because that means they did not repent. This is the judgment. The light has come into the world and the people love the darkness rather than the light because their works were evil. For everyone who does wicked things hates the light and does not come into the light, lest his works should be exposed. But whoever does what is true comes to the light, so that it may be clearly seen that his works have been carried out in God. So I can also see a typology of the end times in this story. So I can see this as an image of Satan being released from the abyss to torment people on earth for a short period of time in order to bring about repentance. The end of Revelation 9, it says the people did not repent, but it means they could have. And if you think about these venomous snakes, it is kind of like uh, certain types of injections that bite and sting people and tyrannize people. And as I started out the video with this image, that just so happens to be a serpent on a pole encompassing the entire flat earth. Shingles? Yeah. One out of three people get shingles in their lifetime. Well, that leaves two out of three people who don't. I don't know anybody who's had it. Your uncle had shingles. You mean that nasty red rash? And Donna next door had it for weeks. Yeah, but there's nothing you can do about it. Actually, shingles can be prevented. Shingles can be what? Prevented. You can get vaccinated. Baby, call the doctor. Hey, you can also get it from your pharmacist. 50 years or older, get vaccinated for shingles now. When you nice car. Sure is. Make a deal with me, kid. You can have the car and everything that goes along with it. I think I got this. I'm trying to read it. Okay. Uh, it's too many thousands. Ah! Yeah, that's too bright. Oh, that's too bright. Go well, anyway. Oh, Macy, are you a Mason? Of course I am. Okay. You, 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 I'm a secret <laughs> serial. Because too many people have chosen to live with this virus. We're at a point in this epidemic, this pandemic, where choice, individuals' choice not to get vaccinated is now impacting the rest of us. Every day, more businesses are implementing their own vaccine mandates. We all want our lives to get back to normal. Um... I don't know, I'm sure a lot of people are not going to agree with this, but uh, don't get the vaccine, you can't go to the supermarket. Don't have the vaccine, you don't show it, you can't go to the ball game. Don't have the vaccine, you can't go to work. You don't have the vaccine, you can't come here. No shirt, no shoes, no service. That's where I think we should be right now, because we continue to waste our breath on people who are just not going to change. Screw your freedom. But I do believe at the local level, Jake, there should be more mandates. <laughs>
This is George Washington's compass. I'm taking a very big risk here in Gamble, but this is how much I believe in Ted Cruz. I'd like you to hold on to that as you're going through and people are slinging mud to make sure that your compass is square. Listen, I, th I think vaccines are terrific. I've had the vaccine myself. I think it's given us a lot of freedom. But I think there's a real potential for government overreach. And, and I don't believe anyone should be forced to take the vaccine. It, it is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in princes. Your compass is square. Compass. <laughs> we often think of propaganda in terms of its very vivid, infamous iconography, such as Nazi propaganda and Stalinist propaganda, but really the most powerful propaganda of the 20th century and the 21st century is insidious, something that we often don't recognize, something that's disguised. And it comes from two words, public relations. Given the fact that we are in somewhat of a very difficult situation, with the accelerating cases, I would encourage private enterprises to seriously consider. You know, when serious people say something is serious, then I guess uh, you, you, that that's that's where you go, right? Of mandating vaccination. Don't have a vaccine? Can't go to work. theory started even back then that it continued to operate underground. underground. Let's talk about that. Now, fast forward to modern times, there is still a belief that there is a global elite secret society that controls a lot of things. Some people on the campus saying pronouns like he, she, him, or her do not represent them accurately, accurately. Time now for the ridiculous, and tonight I'd like to address something sometimes referred to as the gay agenda. Now, I've never actually been to the secret meeting where the gays plot their agenda, though I imagine the catering is quite amazing. There's gonna be drag kids in the world, and I'm one of them. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. Including the U.S. government, the British government, the U.N. I'm here representing civil society. The space program. You know, he was talking about Epstein a long time ago. I know. A long time ago. He was saying there is a fucking island and, the, and they take all these rich politicians and, and some celebrities and they bang these kids. And I was like, come on. He was telling me this a long time ago. So he's also the one who told me about Bohemian Grove. Former presidents go. There's yeah. a photograph of it's uh, Ronald Reagan with Herbert Walker Bush and a couple other people all standing around. And they would put on robes and they would worship an owl god, an owl god, and they would burn an effigy. But it's like shaped like a body. Yeah. And they drop it on the fire, and they're all worshiping an owl god, and they're dressed like druids. Is that camera on me? Friends at the Bohemian Grove. I went to a summer camp. <laughs> we had bonfires. We wore robes. I mean, not like maybe what you do. I just want to say, listen, I won't tell anybody. I got a podcast. I want you to tell Joe. Let me in. I'll worship Moloch. <laughs> and the entire entertainment industry. One day, Jesus is coming. You may be at church. You may be at work. You may be asleep. God grant that you will be ready when he makes his personal appearance. My God, what if his appearance occurs on a Sunday morning? My prophetic word to you this morning is yes. 